UNESCO Remote Radio Week 2021. Get ready for a week devoted to helping radio stations broadcast remotely. And thank you for staying with us here on UNESCO Remote Radio Week. This is your masterclass on interactive radio. Now, we all know one of the things that the internet has created is limitless choice. And that means we all have the attention spans of a goldfish. We really have enough time to devote to a single activity. There's distraction galore. The world is brimming with more media content than ever before. So engagement is probably the most important quality, is giving, is getting, and holding on to attention. And that's why we've got this particular masterclass on interactive radio. It's enhanced, as we know, engagement's enhanced by interactivity. So our host for this masterclass is Nathaniel Ofori from Ghana. And Nathaniel is Manager of Digital Innovation at Farm Radio International. He's got some really great ideas on innovating on radio and mobile applications. Over to you, Nathaniel. Thank you very much, Omar. And uh, hello to everyone. As Omar mentioned, my name is Nathaniel Ofori. I am the Digital Innovation Manager at Farm Radio International. And I will be presenting on interactive radio, innovating on radio and mobile application. Farm Radio International pioneers innovative digital solution and develops engaging new mobile approaches to make the world most popular communication platform or tool, radio, more entertaining, effective and interactive than ever before. After years of researching and learning uh, from working with radio station and listeners, we discovered that interactive and quality radio program is key. In this light, we have developed two key flagship applications to contribute to the mission and operation of radio station. The first one is Farm Radio's Uliza Interactive application that focuses on interactivity and engagement. And the latter, that's the second, is Uliza Log, which serves as audio management application for radio station and provide quality assurance for partners. So to zoom into details, the first application, as I mentioned, is our interactive Uliza application. How we use digital technology to get feedback and interact with listeners who don't have access to internet like the social media and the rest or instant messaging. Our Farm Radio Interactive uh, Uliza application is a web-based application used to power mobile-based services for sharing information and gathering feedback through mobile interaction. The application uses multiple communication methods such as voice, SMS, USSD, and instant messaging and social media. The application allows users to send and receive data using any basic phone and present data in real time. Our interactive application can help partners gather accurate real-time information on topics such as agriculture, nutrition, health, and education, irrespective of the sector. Now, our interactive application provides actionable data to empower insight and decision in combination of radio. As part of our work, we train radio station from a distance uh, remotely or in person to use our interactive application, but more in, in especially to engage hundreds of thousands, making them active participants in radio shows as opposed to passive listeners. Now, driven by our organization's uh, digital innovation team, which I am part, the Uliza interactive suite of services were developed from the application to ensure effective interactivity and engagement in our radio shows. The first service is the Uliza Alert. Now, this is an automated voice and SMS service that sends time sensitive alerts to selected audience. Messages can uh, remind listeners to tune into a radio program or radio show, or send certain tips already covered 
by a radio show, uh, which you know can help listeners gain more insight or more understanding of the radio program. The second is the release a poll to enable interaction between radio broadcasters and the radio show. Radio station can conduct weekly or daily poll or ask questions of their lis listening audience. Depending on their setup, uh, radio listeners can either call, uh, allowing those with uh, low literacy skills to interact, or text a number, and then uh, answer a specific set of questions, both a poll or an open-ended query. The third service that we have is the Uliza Answer. Now, the Uliza Answer allows listeners to ask questions and receive answers and advice via their mobile phone. Colleagues receive the call through an automated phone call uh, to address a question that they have asked on the platform. The fourth one is the Uliza Info. Uh, this is an interactive voice uh, response or an SMS-based service which helps listeners assess timely and relevant information related to our culture or any other information over uh, the phone. Now, how we make radio e-extension more interac interactive using interactive Uliza, our application. First of all, we work with stakeholders in the design of radio poll questions and option to ask any general uh, question. And then radio station partners announce the radio poll on air during the live show, whether it's a daily show or a weekly show. From the diagram, you, you see the loop that listeners then send their responses via phone call or text message, depending on the channel that we are using. And then our interactive application captures and displays listeners' response in real time as you, you see it on your application. The next step is that their responses and poll results are addressed and discussed during the live radio show by stakeholders or uh, resource partners who are in the studio. Now, after the show, the data can be analyzed and shared on social media for larger audience for them to appreciate the discussion that went on at a particular radio station or your radio station. But what about questions that are sensitive? Uh, for us, questions that are sensitive are answered and sent directly to the listener by an expert without using the mobile phone. You remember that uh, in the previous slide, I did I did uh, an explanation of the Uliza answer as a service that you can use. Now, someone will ask us that has this been tried and tested? More than, more than 1,050 of our radio partners and development partners have used our application to interact with more than a million individual listeners. In our previous fiscal year, that is 2020 to 2021 fiscal year alone, there were 433,255 interaction uh, via Uliza inter interaction application that we captured. Now, for me to zoom into our quality assurance, because it's important for you to ensure that as part of you know, ensuring there's a lot of interactivity, the quality of the radio program is also important. So as part of that, Palm Radio International has an application that we have called the Uliza Log, also called Palm Radio Quality Assurance, which is an audio management application for radio station. To zoom into details, our audio uh, application, uh, our, our audio management application for radio station called Uliza Log, it's a web-based collaborative quality assurance application, and it is used by farm radio staff, broadcasters, knowledge partners, and other stakeholders to archive, monitor, 
review, and evaluate radio shows content and production. Our Uliza log makes it easy to keep track of multiple ongoing uh, projects or radio program by letting broadcasters submit reports on a daily or a weekly basis and attach the recording of the episode or the radio program. These reports are evaluated and rated by approved farm radio trainers for quality assurance and control. So although radio programs are broadcast, we find it very important that we need to evaluate the radio program to see if it meets the standards that we have set at farm radio. And not just about the interactivity, but most importantly, the quality of radio show that goes on on the radio. So producing an interactive radio program and a quality radio program helps you to disseminate tailor-made information that are reliable, trusted, and relevant to your audience. In this notes, if you have any clarification, what I have done is to set up one of uh, our application, our interactive application, to receive your question for you to appreciate how the system works. But I will leave it here and open up for discussion, and then we can have a few Q&As. Thank you very much. Omar, you are muted. <laughs> okay, I'm supposed to be the one who knows how to do this. <laughs> but a, a really good presentation. Thank you so much. A really much, interesting Omar. application that you've created. Now, um, obviously, open it up to the audience, many of whom have seen this, like me, for the first time, probably never knew that something like this existed. Um, Want to open up for questions if anybody's watching that's got anything they'd like to ask. Nathaniel, to give them advice, information, insight into that they don't already have from your presentation. They're welcome to send their questions through now. They'll come through to me and I'll pose them to Nathaniel. But while we're waiting for those questions, in one of those applications, like early on, you were talking about the alerts, you said it will be sent to selected audiences. So do you segment which messages go to whom and how do you do that? Thank you very much. Now, as part of your radio program inter interaction, listeners can call and participate in the poll. Now, whilst they do that, you have the liberty to group them depending on the answers that you know, they provide. So, for example, if you want to focus on gender, you have that opportunity to group them in folders and send specific or tailor-made information to these targeted audience. For example, if you have uh, a news, you know, uh, uh, program you need to uh, give your news and you want to send information to people who normally listen to your news you have them stored in a group in your news group you know yeah. uh program so you can send it directly to them so that they know that it's time for them to listen to your news you know uh, when the time is up if you have a sports radio program or an agriculture radio program you can tell them the information and send it to specific group of people who have participated during that show so depending on the radio program that you have you have you know produced, then you can send that information to them. Mm -hmm. I got it. So what about cost here? I mean, obviously, like you say, you work for Farm Radio International. This is rural radio uh, in many countries, uh, many parts of the world, where the more rural you are, the less access to broadband or scarce or poor broadband quality. Does that affect how well this particular app functions? Thank you very much for the question. And, and it's a very interesting one. The application relies on uh, the normal 2G uh, phone call or a normal 3G phone call. So irrespective of the situation, all that the community needs is for them to make phone calls. If they can make normal phone calls, they can still participate in your radio program. All that they need is a basic phone, whether it's a feature phone, a smartphone, or a basic phone, they can still participate in their in your radio program. All that they will do is to listen to the radio show. You give the number out as I as I showed in the diagram, and then they will call a number and participate in the poll. The next uh, question is the cost aspect. So the cost aspect is subject to the radio station. The radio station has an opportunity to bear the cost even from the listeners, meaning 
they can do it in such a way that the caller can beep the number and receive a call back for them to participate in the radio show. Or the caller can call directly into the radio program. From the radio station standpoint, in terms of the cost, we have done it in such a way that it's a pay-as-you-go service and a few fee on the phone number that we provide. So, for example, you just have to top up depending on the platform, whether you're using your debit card or a credit card, or if you're in a specific African countries and we have integrated the mobile money up, you can pay through that so that you can use it in your radio programming. So we have, we have made it very flexible so that radio station can adapt or use this application in their radio programming. Because we have realized that during the phone-in segment, you have a duration that you are producing a radio program. And during the phone-in segment, you can only do a maximum of five minutes or 10 minutes phone call for people to share their views. Now, let's do a simple math. If you allocate a minute for... A, a, each caller or each listener to call in. It means that the maximum people that you can allow to express their view on your show will, will be 10 people within a 10 minutes, you know, phone call. But with this application, because listeners can call anytime during the show and leave their voice, you know, on the system, you can receive thousands of calls, you know, during your show. So if, uh, if you look at the application that I've just projected, for this, we receive uh, close to 356 interaction and the responses where people voted or participated we had we had 170 you know uh, uh, responses on the application just a show you can imagine now if you zoom wait into... just hold on let let us project that Go give on. me a second to yeah. get our people to just project um what yeah, you are sure. showing yeah these are the sure. statistics from a particular example at a particular radio station right yes yeah and this okay. radio station is located in malawi called uh, Chisomo uh, Radio. Now, in the radio show, what, what they were able to gather was uh, for, so 470 for in responses from listeners. But if you look at the interaction in total, you, you see that they recorded a higher interaction you know, in total. Now, for only question two, for this uh, particular radio program, they had... 170 responses for just the question for just a question and 356 interaction so you can imagine the the power the, the power these two can you know do or the change that this uh, interactive application can provide now as part of it you have two sets of data in your radio show so because it is not just about the radio program it's, it's about you also gathering information and also analyzing your radio program and also getting content to inform the next radio program that you will be producing. So here you have, you know, an insight of what listeners are saying or depending uh, uh, of uh, the, if you want to look at the gender uh, segregation, you have an idea of people who are listening to your radio program and interacting with you. Apart from that, you also have content meaning that you have voices recorded on the system that you can play. Uh, I can play it, uh, and then you uh, listen to it. And then if you find very useful in your radio program, you can like it. Click on the uh, like uh, button so that you like it. Or you can also transcribe. Let me just do something here and do test, uh, and then just save it. You know, you can transcribe it. Now, what I have done is to transcribe that audio now what i can do is i can filter it by per the information that i have received by refreshing the page so that it will filter the information of the people that have you know liked uh, the uh, uh, a particular audio of uh, the show so i like it and then i can filter it and then you see the like audio that's uh, the system has, you know, captured. So I can just uh, display all the like audios and then play them in my show during, uh, you know, a live radio program for an expert to answer those questions. And as I mentioned, you can also uh, transcribe the audio just to give you a fair idea of what that person is saying. And then also, you know, when you play it, you can explain it, you know, uh, to listeners or the experts in the studio to answer a question. Mm. 
So, so Nathaniel, what kind of data do you actually collect on the back end? Is it just the mobile phone number or is there not any more all. than that? Oh, okay. It is not at all. We collect, depending on you know, how the uh, application is programmed, you can gather where they are located. To give you a, a few idea of where you, your listeners are located, here I can project where they are located and I have their names in there. Now, as part of you know, their recording, they can mention you know, uh, their name and their location, and then you can key in, in here so that the system will capture, so that when next, next time when they record or they participate in your radio show, you will know where they are located. So here in the map uh, in Malawi, I know where, you know, Enoch is located, you know, on the, on the map. So that is one but data. Just to be clear, though, you only know that it's Enoch because he would have been previously a participant. He would give he would have given you his name, which you would have associated with that mobile number. Had he not Definitely. done that, you would. Yeah. OK. Definitely. Because yes, because right. the person must give his or her consent first yes. before you can capture that data protection is very important for us and very key for us, too. The other aspect, too, is you can gather quantitative data and the qualitative data, as I mentioned, you can do audience research with this and gather these information. So this is very key for you to ask listeners, for them to give feedback based on the radio shows that you have, you know, broadcast so that it can keep you, keep you informed of the topics that you are discussing. You may never know, maybe the topic that you have been discussing on the show is not what the listeners are looking for. The, the listeners are looking for key topics that they want you know, the radio station or the broadcaster to discuss on the show. But if you don't have this type of system, it becomes very difficult for you to appreciate what listeners are saying. So feedback for us is very key and very, very important in our radio programming. Excellent. We have a question uh, from our audiences. Raj Alexa is asking this. How do you manage so many questions and analysis? Is the software AI based? Because obviously you don't have people on the back end, dozens of people, I assume. Maybe you do. I don't know. Thank you very much. Currently, we are, because the voices are done in local languages, analyzing the voices needs to be done manually. So it, okay. need, it means that you need to have people listening and transcribing the audio because you have a lot of local dialects. Now, the, there, has, there have been some improvements in AI aspect because English and French you know, there's a lot of libraries for us to use, but when it comes to local dialect, it becomes difficult because you have thousands of them all over the world. But in terms of the quantitative data, the system analyzes the data, it gives you the raw uh, data, and it gives you an analysis of that. Apart from that, we, you can export the data and run your own analysis, and you know, further for you to check whether a uh, male and female, uh, how many participated in a particular radio program in terms of age group, how many of them participated, you know, in a particular program, how many of them select a particular answer and all that. You can run that analysis by exporting it in, into a SSV file and, and all that. So you have that liberty to do that. But in terms of the voice, we are working on the AI aspect for it to analyze the audio. But as I've mentioned and as the, the reality stand, we have a, a challenges with thousands of local dialects all over. And I, I know that there's uh, improvement. Uh, there are work going on and definitely we will cover that. Okay, great. So, so Nathaniel, the, the other thing to know is when someone subscribes to your offer, to this offer that uh, you've created at Farm Radio International, they get the entire back end, right, to they, work they with. Get the user, yeah, they get the user interface to work with. So right. they have uh, the opportunity to use uh, the radio, uh, our application in their radio programming. So, right. but there's a few trade-offs. For example, for us to give, give you a discount and all that, uh, or have it more free in quote, th there will be some, you know, discussion for you to, you know, have an Aricota radio program on your show for you to, you know, benefit from that, or, you know, some level of discussion for you to use. But if you want to use it in general, then definitely you will have access to the application and use it, yeah. But right. as part so, of currently what we have, the, yeah. the radio station within our network are the ones using the application in their radio programming, sure. Got it. So obviously there's a front end and there's a back end. You were talking about all the data that comes in and how you can segment that data based on gender, based on location, etc. Who sees that? Does the radio partner that gets involved with you also have access to all of that, not just the front end part? 
Do yes. they have the yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So so dependent. So for it, uh, first of all, I just want to make this thing clear that the application is a multi-tendency application. It means that when you create your own account, you have access to your own data. That, that's okay. the first part. So you have the opportunity to create user roles and permissions. So depending on if a radio station A is using the application, they have the privilege to create roles as to who can see this and who cannot see that because the data belongs to them. Now, if you are working with farm radio, then definitely farm radio have access, can see the application and also the radio station can also see that. So the radio station have access to, you know, the data and uh, farm radio also uh, have access to the data correctly. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's great. So, so you still retain access um when but, you but, yeah but if it is um if a radio station creates the uh, an account by themselves then they have yes. super uh they have access to the data it belongs to them it doesn't belong to family because they are using you know that right. uh, application yeah definitely but the data sits you know uh, on farm radios uh, application yeah Okay, good. And then just a final question as we wrap. I don't see anything else coming from the audience that's watching. Is this uh, all cloud-based because it's mobile? Or yes. does it sit yes. on servers both local and on the cloud? How does that work? No, uh, from the uh, user perspective, as a radio, ra uh, at the radio station or a radio presenter or, an, uh, uh, or a partner, it's a mm. cloud-based uh, application. It's a web-based application. Right. So all that you need is internet for you to have access to that. But one unique thing is after that's a setup in your radio show, listeners can participate in the poll or call in and all that without you necessarily having access to the application. So, for example, if you don't even have internet, you can set it up uh, before your radio show and listeners can call in if you even have internet challenges. They can still call in, have access to the content, leave their information and all that. And when you have access to internet, you can just log in and see all the responses that you know the application has uh, captured that's brilliant thank you very much uh, nathaniel ofori who is from ghana he is the manager of digital innovation at farm radio international you have been watching our masterclass the unesco remote radio week masterclass on interactive radio innovating on radio with mobile applications thank you very much for your time nathaniel thanks for watching thank you very much umar and goodbye